friends to finding calm in the chaos. I am Denise Sip, and this is my podcast. Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to another episode of Finding Calm in the Chaos. I'm Denise, and yes, my friends, I am still struggling with my voice. So um, I'm just going to just hammer it out. Like, whatever. It is what it is. I broke down today before we start. Um, yes, uh, it is called Beating the Blues. <laughs> I know. I know now that I'm looking back at that, that could be like, I probably could have came up with some better words, <laughs> whatever. Um, but um, we are in it. Well, I don't know if this happens in summer. Like if you have warm weather, like if you live in Vegas, do you get seasonal affective disorder? Just wondering, just wondering. I don't know. I just, have, I'm just sitting here. I'm like, wait, what? Huh? Anyway. You probably have friends in the Midwest or on the East Coast, and they got it, just saying. Um, Today, we are going to talk about things to beat the winter blues, because in all honesty, I used to not think that I got affected by this at all, but looking back at it, (laughs) I'm like, yeah, Denise, you were raging for a reason. Um, stop. But, you know, (laughs) my friends, as I have been evaluating and growing and just looking at things and trying to be literally the best person I can be, like I want, like Phil Wickham would say, I want to walk the Jesus way. And if you know, you know, (laughs) um, love me some Phil, uh, but I wanted to make sure, oh, my little coffee zombie girl, sorry. That probably sounded obnoxious. I have it attached to my mic, but something was bouncing off my shoulder and it was my little zombie coffee girl that I got in, um, oh shoot, this probably Fort Myers a while ago. She was cute. Anyway, um, can you tell I'm all over? But I do actually have material I want to go through today because... I want to start out, little disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychiatrist. However, I am a holistic nutritionist. And so there are some things that you can do to use foods, okay, that are mood boosting to help you beat the winter blues, right? Um, I don't want to say seasonal affective disorder because that has a lot of more underlying things that are attached to it. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not making medical claims. I'm just telling you how you can be in the best spirits mood wise over the winter. If you go through winter or you have friends that do write this stuff down. And then these are things that will help boost your mood naturally. Okay. Cause I know a lot of people will go, you guys know that I have a love eight relationship with the medical community. I appreciate that they saved my life in a terminal cancer, but I don't appreciate that they do unnecessary things that basically are just going to make me sicker. So um, I kind of pick and choose what I need to do based on what's right for me. I totally recommend that all of you do the same. Your doctor is not the authority. You are. You are hiring your doctor or the nurse practitioner or whomever it will be, the PA, you are hiring them for their professional opinion because you chose not to go to medical school. You chose to do something else, okay? Just like when we need a new roof, we call a roofer and we ask their professional opinion on what we need to do, how much it's gonna cost. Could you imagine asking your doctor how much it's gonna cost? They have no idea. That's a whole nother story. That is a whole nother podcast, my friends. So, but think about that. Uh, They are there not to dictate what you need to do with your health, but to provide you with information that they went to school with and in their experience so that you can make the best choice for you and your family. Please keep that in mind because doctors, they get a little crazy sometimes. I don't like the words, my doctor let. No, (laughs) it makes me crazy. 
in all honesty. You'll talk to people. This happens a lot with pregnant people. I'm not even going to go into this. But my biggest, like, it's like someone took a knife and poked me in the eye was when people who are pregnant are like, my doctor's going to let me go a couple more weeks. Stop it. Your doctor's going to what? No, baby. That baby comes out when that baby comes out. Unless it's a medical situation or you choose, mama, because you're in control, not the doctor, not his boating schedule, not his golf schedule, not the holiday schedule. You are. Okay. I'm going to move along. Um, <laughs> I am on fire today. Um, so I'm going to talk about mood boosting foods to help you beat the winter blues instead of going to the doctor and them telling you you need a vitamin D shot that's synthetic and it's going to do basically poop for your body. I said it and I stand by it because here's the thing. If those vitamin D shots worked for you, why do you have to keep going back to get it? Right? Because you're not fixing the problem. And the problem is you're not getting the proper nutrition or the proper exposure to outside to get natural vitamin D through the sun. All right. I said that too. I'm on fire today. Sometimes I think we need to walk into 2025 with like a truth bomb. If you're in America, we got a bunch of stuff going on. We got a big election. We have a lot of lies. We have a lot of crazy. We have a lot, like there is, I, if you would have told me 10 years ago, if you would have showed me clips of some of the things that our current government says out loud, in a professional at like, I mean, they're on, they're talking to people, the press, they're talking to worlds. The world is watching us. And then they say things and they're just ridiculous. And I'm like, why? It's embarrassing. I'm saying it to all my European friends and my friends around the world. I'm sorry. There are people trying to fix this, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. Um, but literally, there are a lot of people like myself. We got shorter daylight hours. <laughs> I'm not even going to go into daylight savings. Peter just asked this morning. He was like, we got up for school and he was like, mom, why is this still dark out? And I'm like, because um, the hours are changing now, hon. So it's going to be darker in the morning and darker earlier because winter's coming. And he goes, that's not, that's ridiculous. And I'm like, it is, but <laughs> that's how it goes, my friend. Um, but shorter daylight hours, winter sets for those of us who get it, dreary weather, it really sometimes gets you down, okay? it's It just is naturally does that. But there is a reason why it does that, okay? So less sunlight, fewer opportunities for outdoor exercise, all these things combined, right, have an overall effect. And what that do is, what that do, what that does is it can make you feel sluggish, okay? But I'm here because I'm going to tell you today that there are ways that you can improve the way you feel, wait for it, by eating certain natural foods. Yeah, I said it. You guys expected me to have like a drink, here's a pill, here's a, no, there is no pill, drink, anything that can do what food can do for your body. And I always, one of the things that really made a difference to me was, and I'm not being strict. What I'm saying is, is for me, I have some eating issues um, where I eat out of emotion from all my childhood trauma. So I have to eat well all the time. But then when I do that, because I also do it for my autoimmune, all of that, right? Because I don't take medication. I get advised that I should take things, but I opt to do it through diet. Okay. This decreases other side effects and it also gives my body a chance to heal itself and I can know what is going on and how it's progressing. Okay. So you can actually improve the way you feel. Now notice I'm not saying heal. I'm not saying cure. 
those are not, those are no K. Okay. That I'm not responsible for that. That's God. Boom. Okay. You can improve the way you feel by eating certain natural foods. Okay. Cause when you eat foods that are high in vitamins, B, C, D, uh, that are rich in, uh, magnesium, iron, folate, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, you can increase not just your energy levels, but in many cases, improve your mood as well. Most people who um, suffer from winter blues, like myself, use the winter and fall, because I mean, come on, what's going on? I've already got caramel apples. Um, I'm already drinking, you know, the pumpkin spice and all of that. And it's just, you have to know, it's just a time of celebration. Uh, And with celebration comes excess, especially as Americans. We really don't know how to kind of turn that down. We don't understand the word moderation in America. We really don't. We have to truly struggle and try and make an effort for moderation. And that goes on the extreme and on the deficiency, okay? We're on one end of the spectrum. Either we're way over here eating the entire buffet or we're way over here and we're only doing fruits between three and two and and doing, you know, uh, I drink this much water, but I'm only allowed a diet something. And even though that's worse for you than real uh, soda um, at, at some point, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. We One extreme, we know no moderation in the middle. Yes, you can enjoy all of the yummy things that come with fall and winter. However, if you just do it in moderation and you stay active, I have found personally that I can enjoy the caramel apple. You know, if you went and went apple picking, you get yourself a caramel apple. You just walk through fields of grass. Come on. And probably had the juggle, the bags of apples. Your kids, your kid, your husband. I'm just saying, you know what I'm, you know, I'm, it is what it is. Moms, you know. But all of those things can re- increase your energy levels and your mood. Okay. So here I just have a list of the top foods. And this is where the disconnect's going to come for, I would say, 80% of people listening is we want to feel better. But we want to do it either real quick. (laughs) It's true. All right. We want just, can you just give me a shot? Isn't there just a pill? Can I just do this drink? Can I just, no. No, you cannot. And one of the things that we have decided, especially in America, is that we are going to eat what we're going to eat. But then we're going to complain incessantly about how bad we feel. I know that if I eat certain foods that I, my body is going to be like, nope. And it's going to give me a hard time. I can't complain about it because I made the choice to eat those things while I was out. The trade-off, I was enjoying an event with my family. We went to a um, local like AAA baseball team game the other day it's a playoff game I felt horrible because first off there was like hardly anybody there and the poor guys made the damn playoffs however I mean I'm not a baseball person I'm a hockey person y'all know that that comes in October Ah, ah. anyway um (laughs) don't get me started on the hockey um but there are things that you can do I walked to the stadium (laughs) Mr. Sith didn't bark in handicap because he couldn't figure out how to get in there. Um, so we just walked. Okay. And then, so I walked in, I walked down, everybody's doing stuff. We couldn't go during, um, it, the game was like at six or something like that. So we missed, I didn't make dinner. Cause by the time we got home, did school stuff, Mr. Sith came home, we fed the dogs. It was time to go. So I was like, Oh, great. Lovely. So I just thought, you know what? I'll eat something there. Uh, what are you going to eat that's healthy at a ballpark? Let's be honest. So I just enjoyed myself. I had a hamburger, plain, with just cheese, because I, I got to think about condiments when I'm out. You usually have to, like, put them on or they're in a pump. 
yeah, that's a OCD thing. Um, and then I had nachos and I'm going to tell you a little mom trick. Just FYI, moms, you're welcome. Uh, when you are out, if you can do spicy, if there is a spicy option, I get it. If your kids eat spicy, this doesn't work for you. But Peter does not do spicy. So Mr. Sith got two things of nachos. And so I took my nachos and I drained all of the juice into my cheese, mixed it up, and it looked all weird and curdly. I don't care. I don't care. I'm eating it. And then I put my jalapenos all over my chips. And um, then you get a double dose of spicy. And then at the end, when Peter is ready to, he ate everything that he has. And he's like, can I have one of your nachos? And he wants to take all your cheese. He can't because he doesn't do spicy. And mommy's cheese is spicy. Mm, you're welcome. Um, number one food, fish. A lot of people don't like fish. And let me explain to you that my theory holds through in all of my years of holistic nutrition, people who don't like certain foods, if you have an allergy, sh just sit down, okay? I'm not talking about people with allergies. If you have a sensitivity, why don't we stop talking about how we don't eat every food known to man because you have a sensitivity to it and um, start healing your gut. Why don't we do that? Because I always love when people tell me that they can't eat gluten because they have a sensitivity or they can't eat dairy. These are all legitimate sensitivities. But then they'll do stuff like, I can't eat pineapple because I have a sensitivity. I don't eat green beans because I have a sensitivity. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have a sensitivity? No, you have an aversion to eating something that you have convinced yourself, usually it stems from childhood, that you are not going to eat that anymore. You don't like a texture. You're freaking yourself out. No, that's all in your head and you need to work on it. You need to work with a therapist, a food therapist. You need to work with nutritionists to help you overcome these aversions you have to food. But I'm really tired of people telling me they're allergic to things when they have a sensitivity and that they have aversions to things, but they call it a sensitivity. That really makes me mad because there are people who legitimately have celiacs, uh, uh, Renaults, uh, a ton of stuff that they cannot eat certain things or they could die and they can go in a hospital. So please, please stop using that. And not everybody should be gluten-free. In fact, a majority of people should not be gluten-free. You should be eating grains that are good for you because ancient grains are healing for the gut. We talked about that. Oh my God, I'm rambling about this and I haven't even started. Fish. <laughs> fish. Okay. Fish are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and that improves the function of the cerebral cortex, right? Which is the part of the brain that processes feelings of pleasure, satisfaction, you know, the good stuff. Omega-3 fatty acids, they work uh, to increase the brain's production of serotonin and dopamine, the neurotransmitters that are directly linked to our moods, okay? I hope I picked the right ones. Serotonin and dopamine, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, in addition, okay, we're gonna add stuff, salmon, is loaded with vitamin D, which our bodies are lacking with less exposure to the sunlight during the winter, okay? So salmon is amazing. A lot of people either love salmon or they don't love salmon. Let me tell you this, salmon is delicious, but it has to be cooked properly. Um, there is a fine line between cooked salmon, which is delicious, and overcooked salmon, it takes about 20 seconds <laughs> to get there. For me, it's easier to pull the salmon earlier than later because some things cannot be cooked well done because they shouldn't be because you're eating up on the nutrients that are in those foods. They should just be cooked through, if that makes sense, okay? So fish, fresh fruits, especially citrus fruits, because it's like eating liquid sunshine. Come on, guys. There are rich amounts of vitamin C in like oranges, 
grapefruits, lemons, limes, and those can help fight fatigue and depression for sure. Cherries, dark berries, great mood enhancers. They're loaded with antioxidants. Uh, Berries are also rich in folate, which is also known as um, B, I always screwed this one up, B9 or folic acid. Okay, but you want folate, okay? Because when you're looking at stuff that like in vitamins, you want to make sure it says folate and not folic acid. Uh, folate helps brain pro- uh, your brain produce serotonin and dopamine, and those ner- neurotransmitters again help regulate the body's sleep wake cycle. And also, okay, so think about that. You're going to boost it up. You just want to keep that serotonin and keep that dopamine high or at least fed, okay? So that you can level out and not be just crashing because winter, okay? This one's gonna kill people. Leafy green vegetables. I don't understand this, why people don't like leafy green vegetables. I think it has something to do with just that you didn't want it or you were given something raw and unprepared because they are delicious. I'll eat anything green. I mean, Popeye wasn't wrong, peeps, okay? I know I'm going to age myself right there. Popeye to say, like, man, um, I eat all my spinach. I'm strong to the finish. No? All right. Um, I used to love that. Now I want to watch the movie with Shelley Duvall and, and Robin Williams. Crazy. Yep, Robin Williams played Popeye. If you don't know, Google it. Leafy green veggies, uh, spinach, collard greens, uh, kale, Swiss chard, high in potassium, magnesium, calcium, all of those things highly regulate stress hormones and your sleep cycle. If you cannot eat greens, they have to be made a certain way. They have to be cleaned. You have to de-stem them. Usually they have to be broken down. I hate when people eat kale, kale. I hate when people eat kale and they are like, "Uh, I don't like kale. It's like dry. Well, you just ate it dry. When you make kale, here's a little cooking tip. You should rip it apart or cut it after you de-stem it into bite-sized pieces. Okay? So once you do that, put it in a bowl. And then you want to cover it with some oil. Preferably a really good... Uh, packaged and made in the Italy, Spain, or Greece olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, maybe three tablespoons, depending on how big your bowl is. Okay. And then I'm talking about a big bowl for like a family. And then you're going to massage the oil with your hands. Now with a spoon, you're going to massage the kale leaves with that oil. Once they are all effectively coated, You're then going to take some salt, good salt, mineral salt, natural salt. Remember, not Morton Girl salt. And then you're going to sprinkle generously some salt. You're going to massage it again. And then you're going to leave it and let, and go ahead and make your dinner. That could be like your salad or whatever. Okay. That salt is going to essentially season your kale. But also, it's going to break down those fibers. All the goodness will still be in there. But it won't be so like, you know, like you're eating a little leather leaves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and you could also put a little, you could finish it with a little lemon, like a squeeze of lemon, a squeeze of orange, lime, any citrus. You can slice some red onions for contrast. Uh, you're going to get that. Uh, sharpness of the red onion, but like the earthy of the um, kale, you're going to get the citrus salt, add a little pepper. If you want to add some fresh green, you can add some parsley in it. Parsley is a wonderful digestive as well. And it also cleans your teeth. Um, and then I usually will do it with beets. I roast red beets and um, just with a little olive oil, uh, I don't even salt and pepper it coming out because the salt is on the kale itself, so I don't have to worry about it. And then I will sprinkle or crumble some goat cheese in it, some herbed goat cheese, some honey goat cheese, 
you can buy it in tiny little packages of like two ounces and this way um you're also getting some of that so you don't have to worry about cow milk i see i prefer the goat and the sheep's cheeses are uh way better on my my digestion uh i can say digestion there we go boy whoo okay so um leafy greens are a super good source is all you need to know of folate okay which also reduces your risk of heart disease and memory loss yeah now i feel like i just need to eat green i do love eating greens during the fall in the winter though it's like my go-to i love it so um you've got fish fresh fruits leafy green vegetables and mushrooms i know a lot of people are gonna give me a hard time here people mushrooms get a bad rap peter loves mushroom mushrooms he loves them um eating a serving of mushrooms is equivalent to taking a daily malt uh vitamin d supplement I'm going to read that again for the people in the back. Eating a serving of mushrooms is equivalent to taking a daily vitamin D supplement. You don't want to eat them? Drink them, man. They have all these like mushroom drinks and stuff. Just don't get a bunch of crap in them. Just get like a mushroom powder. It's just easier. Add it to your coffee. Do stuff like that. Um, Get creative. Add it to your smoothie. Then you're only tasting your smoothie, but you're getting the benefits of the mushrooms. Mushrooms also contain two uh, B vitamins, niacin and rib, uh, riboflavin, which can uh, also help improve your move. So there's that, right? Nuts. Okay, if you're allergic to nuts, don't tell me you can't eat nuts. Don't eat nuts. You're allergic to them. Oh, uh, right? Um, but many of us are super low in consumption of magnesium. And as a result, you can feel fatigued, experience like, these mood altering effects, right? Muscle tension, irregular heartbeat, insomnia, restless leg syndrome, that all comes from low consumption of magnesium. You can get that back. Now, I also suffer from this and I eat a ton of nuts. So go figure that. But we kind of think we know that it's probably from one of my autoimmunes that are doing this to me. I don't get it all the time, but sometimes my legs are just... I, I feel like I need to like jump out of my legs and um, I use magnesium oil spray at night. I'll rub it on my legs. It helps. Okay. It is a good uh, neurotransmitter. So try snacking on nuts, add them to your salads to get enough of like an important mineral. It's pretty important uh, nuts. So what are we talking about? Pecans, walnuts, almonds. Um, they also contain amino, uh, the amino acid uh, tryptophan, which is also a neurotransmitter that can improve depression. Tryptophan, where's that come from? Like our turkey. So it's a nice calmer, like chill, right? But you do have to be careful with nuts. So here's the thing. I had a client a long time ago. Um, He loved nuts. And one of the things he would do is he would go and buy them in bulk and then eat them all the same day. And I'm like, dude, nuts are high in fat. So you want to eat portions and i always tell people stop eating out of bags and containers we do that in america and it's a horrible horrible habit to be in in my house i have these little glass bowls and little silver bowls that are essentially like when you're cooking you could do all your ingredients mise en place put them all together ahead of time and then you just have like everything all done and cut up we are not allowed to get snacks in my house unless we get one of those bowls and we portion out what we're going to get. That includes nuts, chips, all of that stuff. Okay. We do eat them. We eat healthy chips. Like none of my chips have like garbage. They're usually like garbanzo bean chips or something like that, but they're just as good. Black bean chips. You just, you know, and the more you eat it, the more your body is going to get, your taste buds are going to get used to having them. Um, Dark chocolate, not milk chocolate. I have to confirm this for all the Americans. Eating a bunch of Reese's peanut butter cups or stuff like that is not going to help you. Okay? Milk chocolate is garbage. Um, You want dark chocolate. And then everyone's like, oh, wait, dark chocolate, though, Denise. Then go find a good dark chocolate bar. Spend some money on it. Good chocolate is delicious. 
Um, but you get a mood boost. I mean, get a mood boost from a food that at least is fun to eat, right? Like in Harry Potter, when Professor Lupin, every time Harry has issues with the Dementors, yeah, I'm, I'm using the Harry Potter reference. Yep, I'm doing it right now. Um, he tells, he says, here, eat this, and it'll make you feel better. Here, eat this. It really does make you feel better. And it's chocolate. He's not wrong. Dark chocolate stimulates the production of the chemical serotonin, which acts as a natural antidepressant and of endorphins. And again, moderation's the key. I can have a chocolate bar. In fact, I do have chocolate <clears throat> up in the cabinet. I hide it because my chocolate's expensive. So the chocolate I like is called Who H U with a little line over it. I don't know. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. That's how I pronounce it. I get it at my little food shed co-op grocery. And um, it comes in a bunch of different flavors, dark chocolate. They do have some milk chocolate, probably, you know, to appease the masses. But I don't care about those. I only do the dark chocolate. And they have like a hazelnut coffee and like a chocolate crunch. It's delicious. And moderation's the key. I There is a reason why. I know this is hard for some people to even comprehend. There's a reason why candy bars are split into sections because each section is a serving per day. You know what I'm saying? So I just break a piece off when I'm ready to, you know, whatever. And I'll make a, I make a whole routine of it. I'll go and make myself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And I like, make sure it's going to like, balance the chocolate that I'm eating, whatever, you know, flavor I chose. And then I sit down and I have a pretty little plate, tiny little plate, little tea plate or something. And then I'll put something on and I'll have my little chocolate. And I don't just put like the whole piece in my mouth. I literally will be like, you know, take a little chew, a little chew. I'll break it up into four bites. And it's really good. And that also is stimulating, you know, as you're chewing and your that chocolate is getting you know around and whatever you're sending signals to your brain you feel so much better than just swallowing it whole and then regretting it later because you ate a whole bar when you're only supposed to eat a piece but um there was a swiss study like switzerland that found that eating just an ounce of dark chocolate daily for two weeks reduced stress hormone levels in people with high anxiety Cha, guess what i'm gonna do <laughs> I'm gonna up my I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna test it out. Cause I have had some serious anxiety lately, folks. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, next one, garlic. Okay, you love Italian food. Chances are you probably like garlic. Okay. Some people don't like garlic. Me personally, I make honey garlic fermented. So I take a whole uh <clears throat> like a a mason jar. Okay, so all the mason jars, I will fill it up with garlic so whole cloves peeled skinned okay you're gonna put whole cloves in there peeled and then i top it off and i fill it completely with honey let that sit for two months and boom it is the best and i know everyone's like oh my god denise garlic and honey but it's delicious and it thins out your honey i have real thick honey because i have the raw from the farm but it is um it will loosen up because the garlic is going to release all of its delicious essence and healing and medicinal properties into the honey. Teaspoon of that a day during the winter, boom, you ain't getting sick. Um, did you know garlic is good for your mood? So when you consume garlic, your body produces more of the neurotransmitter. Uh, this time it's norepin uh, norepinephrine which helps reduce stress legitimately. Garlic also relaxes the body's blood vessels, which can reduce blood pressure. Uh, no, you can't stop taking your blood pressure meds. That's something you got to do with your doctor. Um, I'm just saying, you got to cover all the bases. It's a podcast, but we're not doing, don't do anything, you know, st stick with, use your best judgment. Uh, and bananas. The last one is bananas because hello, uh, it's portable. It's easy to eat. It's great for you. It's a banana, people, okay? When you eat a banana, you get this healthy combination of, obviously, we all know you get potassium, the vitamins A, um, <clears throat> what's the other one? C, B6, fiber, 
tryptophan, potassium, phosphorus. I can go on. What else is in there? Uh, iron, uh, protein, carbohydrates. I actually went out. I, I used to know somebody when I worked in the corporate area that would bring a banana every day to work. And uh, she would only eat a half because she said it was too fat. Had too many fat and, and carbs in it. And I'm like, stop. Just stop. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. Plus also she would eat like a ton of junk during the day. I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe if you stopped eating all the junk you got out of the machine, the vending machine, you could eat your whole banana. Just saying. But it's funny how our brains will justify that it's okay to eat a bunch of junk in small packages out of a vending machine. But somehow we convinced ourselves that eating a whole banana can be fattening and too many carbs. It's all in adjusting the mindset, my friends. Okay. So in addition to all of that stuff with bananas, you'll get a quick energy boost from it, uh, it as well, both the fructose and the fiber from both of them. So both of them will give uh boost. The great thing, just in general, wrapping up, <clears throat> I, oh, yeah, we're at 35 minutes. The great thing about pretty much all of these natural like energy boosting foods is that you can keep them handy. Okay. You can, if you're at work, put them in your desk. Uh, if you in the car, uh, quick, don't put chocolate in the car unless you get a winter. But if you live like in Vegas or Arizona, I don't suggest putting carry it in your purse, my friends. Um, but it could be a quick snack, quick snack for the kids. And please ditch the energy drinks and these so-called power bars and reach for real food for natural mood lighteners, okay? Stop the power drinks. I can't believe people are still doing power and energy drinks. Do you know there is an epidemic right now in America where there are kids literally having heart disease from it? They're becoming affected by this it is horrible to drink those. It is horrible to do any of that. Yes, you can have coffee, but the stuff and the poisons that they put into those energy drinks, I'm just furious that they even still have them on the markets here. Um, you know, it is what it is, but stop drinking those. Just stop if you are and try to do something like a natural food boost to see if it'll help you with your energy. And will definitely help you beat the winter blues. That's what I've got today. I will see you Saturday during Coffee Talk, my friends. Until then, with kindness. Bye.